What's going on, guys? Welcome to All Access Magic. I'm your host, Mr. Ryan Edwards. This guy over here is Blaze Sarah. Welcome everybody to the show. This one is a, a solemn occasion. This is a uh, yeah. So our condolences out to all the friends and family of uh, of the legend, Mr. Max Maven. He, uh, I mean, he was the mentalist, the men- the the man, the myth, the legend. The which I mean is is suitable for how we usually introduce people yes. on the show. So um, yeah, it. Uh, I mean, we all kind of woke up to the news. I think this morning, and uh, um, you know, I know there's lots of people out there thinking of him right now, and and the community will be for a while. Uh, so I mean, he did a lot, did a lot in the community over a number number of years. So um, so yeah, I think tonight we uh, we decided we would do uh, do an episode just on Max May and we canceled our regular guest uh, and said, we just wanted to do something and, and play some videos of Max and kind of just chat about some of the stuff that, yeah. that Max has done over the years. So absolutely um, very influential guy. And um, I wonder if the commenter that always hops in <laughs> Mr. Goldstein oh, yeah. is going to, Oh yeah. Is going to hop in this channel. That'll be interesting. Time. That'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That'll be the greatest magic trick we've ever performed on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that uh, yeah, we do usually have uh, Mr. Goldstein pop on, so it'll be interesting to see if uh, if that happens tonight. Yeah. Um, now, but, um, uh, you had something you wanted to show the audience. I did. Well, because we had we had a guest on a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of your good friends, Blaze, um, mm. and inspired me. And I asked him that day. Uh, mm. I said I shaved my head, uh, and I'm, I'm going to continue to shave it. I think for a little while. So he, yeah. I said I need to get a hat. Uh, a hat recommendation from Mr. Cameron Braxton, one of the best dressed men in magic. That's it. So, uh, so my wife actually for my birthday, which was, uh, just on Monday, actually, uh, Halloween, the big day. Uh, and so, uh, my wife actually got me a a gift card for this hat store where they make, uh, hats. And so Mm -hmm. I went there today with her, uh, her, me and Levi went down and, uh, went to Niagara on the lake. And so I, uh, got some hats. So. Uh, I bought a couple, about three hats. Mm. Uh, so <clears throat> type in the chat, which one you think is the best before we get started here with all these videos. But I want to know which one looks the best. Uh, so, oh, look at that fedora with a feather in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look at this. All right, I got to take these off. So I'm not going to be able to hear you for wow. a minute. But uh, yeah. Oh, you do be rocking. <laughs> oh, top of the morning to you. So we got we got this bad boy fedora with the feather grant nice call uh so fedora boom they, they're all kind of the same style just uh, uh a little bit different so then we've got the uh oh that one i actually found a picture of you we got the black one with the uh like plaid underneath mm. uh, so yeah, you had the black. You had the black fedora, and then last but not least, this is my favorite one today. But I really like the brown one as well. Uh, is uh, is this guy here? Yeah, that was my favorite one as well. <laughs> that was I did not look like that. That guy. was my favorite one when you wore that and we took that picture. Uh, remember when we did that photo shoot and you took that picture right after you bought it? Yeah, that was, oh, that yeah. was my favorite one too. I do remember that. It, yeah. uh, you looked really good in that photo. I'll just wear this the rest of the episode. I won't be able to hear you, so I'll have to do this. <laughs> just <laughs> won't be able to hear anything. Blaze, cover your ears with the hat. Not important, um, but uh, but yeah. Let me know which one you guys think is the best, because uh, uh, I'm gonna be wearing it. I'm out. Let's um let's take a look here. Oh, I see. Oh, we did take a photo of you with the brown fedora as well. You did? Yes, of course we did. Remember? You were like, cheers. Oh, uh, I do. That was you. Cheers. Cheers. See, that's a spitting image. Yeah, so welcome to our <laughs> welcome to our tribute to Max Mayfair. Just wanted to get that out of the way. This it was an important thing. Way. No, I uh, aside from my roasting, I think that the uh, the um, the hats actually do look really good on you and a lot better than they would on me because I always look awful in hats. I uh, I did find out I'm coming to New York City in uh, two weeks. 
Nice. Uh, yeah. Gonna Wait, which, which dates exactly? Do you know? Uh, I think it's going to be the 15th, 16th, 17th. Oh, so okay, great. So I'm doing a lecture with Laura London at Tannen's Magic Shop in New York City on the 16th. So you're just in time oh. to sit through a two and a half hour lecture. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, that's good. At least you'll be in New York. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to see Aussie on the 17th. Uh, mm. and then fly back home either that night or very early in the next day. Cause I've got some, oh, nice. I got two shows on the 18th. Uh, nice. so got to get back, but, um, but going to go check that out. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, if you're going to be in New York oh, city, yeah. come down, I'm going to bring all three hats. So blaze has to wear come one. Come down, hang out, his, uh, jam, and make sure that you come to Tannen's magic on the 16th, 7 yeah. PM and see Laura London and I do our lecture and our show. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, bring a hat for you to wear. I'm excited. I'll rock it the whole time. I'll be wearing my fedora. Yeah, yeah. So naming it up. Hungry and and hungover says rest in peace, Max. Uh, absolute legend. Cheers. Uh, still use desire whenever I perform with billets. Uh, his work will live on forever. A hundred percent. He published That's so cool much case. and did yeah. so, ma- so many like TV appearances and everything. Yeah, he like yeah, really Probably influential fair. guy. That's what we figured we'd do tonight is uh, to watch back some of the uh, the classics that uh, Max had some television specials and stuff and, and different acts that he's performed. So uh, do you want to just get get right into it? Yeah, I think so. So without further ado, let's jump in to some of Max Maven's mind games. Now, this was a, a really big this special. Was, of his. This is a longer one. This was like the full VHS uh, that I found that... Uh, yeah, from 1984. So this was a year before I was born, even, um, which is which is crazy. So this intro, if I just skim through this intro a little bit, you know, it says Max Maven's Mind Games. It's like walking up to a door. Yeah, you have all the different. Uh, it is wait, pretty cool. Let's say, oh, Goldsmith. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Not I know. Okay. I I read the same thing earlier. And then, and then we get up to. <laughs> my name is Max Maven. Yes, I, I need to get the uh, the audio going so we can mm-hmm. hear I, Max. Oh, I can hear it. Oh, you could hear it just now. Yeah. Oh, that's strange that I couldn't hear it just now. Can Can everybody else hear it? Uh, give a thumbs up in the comments if you can hear it. But yeah, it was coming through fine for me. Okay, let me try this here. Okay. And I invite you to join me in a unique form of television. Together, we are going to attempt some, let's call them experiments, involving my mind and yours. The question before us is simple. Is it possible for me to influence your behavior? Blow it up, full screen. Clear across this screen. Of course it's possible. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Cut. Stop, Jake. I will work from now. That's something that we should say also about him is that he was so like um, he was one of the really early people when it came to doing magic through or mentalism through the screen, like the screen. On a TV special and having mentalism that worked for the people in the audience at home. And a lot of people when COVID happened started then looking back and pulling from Max Maven material to yep. then like find influence for, you know, for their own shows. Oh yeah. There was things developed. There's one trick that came out even that um, with like the pool balls and stuff that would move off the screen. And I mean, all of that stuff is like originally, like as far as I know, going back, like that's what Max did on TV all the time and stuff. So I know David ended up doing it on TV as well later on, but, um, but yeah, Max uh, always had stuff. And there's, I think there's a few of them that he shows in this, in this special. So Mm. Yeah, so let's let's check it out. And attempt to connect with you in the privacy of home. Now, as I'm sure you can appreciate, this is no easy task. It's one thing to establish mind-to-mind contact when you're working in person. This is already quite another really cool. to do it working from. Oh, it's a super cool special. Fortunately, I'm aided really cool. in this task by the unselfish and loyal participation of the Mavenettes. Unless you 
You can appreciate the tremendous amount of painstaking research that has gone into this project. To help cope with the overwhelming amount of information, I've had this computer installed right here in the studio. Ouch. <laughs> Sorry. That's perfectly all right, Mr. Maven. Are you ready to begin our program? Yes. It's been quite exhausting, and so far today has been rather weird, but I think when you put it all together... weird was it? Never mind. It's time we got started. To begin, I think it best if we try some warm-up exercises. In this program, it will be important for you to follow my instructions. Let's so we'll start this. with an experiment designed to your and, ability uh, to do just that. To. So if you would, Sweet. listen carefully and do exactly as I say. Would you each extend your right hand? If you're confused, that's the one on this side. Good. Extend your right thumb. Extend your right forefinger. Excellent. Excellent. Make a circle of the thumb and forefinger and touch it to your chin. That's your cheek. Well, now that we've established your ability to follow instructions, yeah. let's proceed. And for this next endeavor, stand up right where you are and we can begin. I said, stand up. <laughs> that's, that, that's actually great. That's knowing that, right knowing that most people watching TV. Your wouldn't. Hands in front yeah, of you. He has great. And then like, clasp your the hands and stuff. together. Mm -hmm. Interlacing the fingers tightly. Oh, this. Extend your forefingers, still clasping the hands tightly together. And then separate the forefingers approximately two inches apart. And what I'm going to do is to suggest to you that your fingers are moving back together again. It's as if I were reaching across the television screen and pushing your fingers together. Closer and closer and closer. Until they are once again back together. Once again, touching. Rather a touching experience, wouldn't you say? Rather well, touching I experience. think we are properly warmed up and ready to begin our journey. And for this next experiment, gentleman, come mm -hmm. close to me. Well, you're such a character, right? Right up, like... yeah. right up to your television set. Fine. Because together, we are going to try an experiment in international travel. And for this excursion into your imagination, I have selected 25 possible destinations. 25 locations notice how like we're still like we're six minutes in and it's going to mm -hmm. continue until seven minutes in to the special before another person is even introduced into this yeah. magic it's like he's just himself for the camera and very entertaining and like mm -hmm. yeah and Around involving the, the audience at home to make everyone feel engaged you see a collection of flags representing countries from all over the globe Look these over carefully, and then put your finger on any flag which contains the color blue. Somebody did this trick on like AGT a year ago or something, really? and he did this in 1984. Not with the flag. Well, I'm just, I was gonna say, yeah. I'm just saying with this like kind of principle. Wow, that's so interesting having the USSR on there. Oh yeah, West Germany. What is uh what is the one at the bottom there? New can't see what the second word says. New Guinea? Uh yeah, I think so. I think you're right, New Guinea. But is that what the flag of New Papua New Guinea looks like? Wait. New yeah, Guinea. Nigeria. And is that is that oh, yeah, yeah, it is Flag of New Guinea. Okay, yeah, Papua New Guinea. What is is the blue with uh, just the star? Is that like Scandinavia? That's Somalia. Somalia. Oh, Somalia. I can't can barely yeah. read the word. So if there's a uh, a way I can. No, this is the top quality. Is three. Yeah. Are you sure that is the one you wish to start on, or do you so want to start on whatever one we want? Blue. We'll use that one. Move your finger left or right to the nearest flag which has some green. Now, move up or down to the nearest flag with some yellow. 
finally move left or down to the nearest flag with some green. Mmm, Italy. I adore Italian cooking. How about you? <laughs> As we move on to a more complex level. Excuse me, signor. Here is your check. I hope you enjoyed no, your sorry. meal. We're doing a television special. Uh, You're gonna signor, I have to close As up. we I move on to a more. That's $19. There was no Italian waiter. Sketch. This is really well done. I'm in the middle mm -hmm. of the Come on, you pay. This was big budget, probably yeah, back like the all the backdrops and stuff. Hey, you win son of a Take a big shot with two rings, and you got the. As we move up to a That's more great. complex level of mind-to-mind yeah. -mind interaction, you're going to need certain materials to continue our experiments. Now, these are simple objects you can find around the house. I'll tell you exactly what you need. First of all, some paper. This can be ordinary writing paper. Or index cards will do just fine. Something to write with, a pencil or a pen. An envelope. A pack of playing cards. A Is the audio tie, doubling at all? A pair of scissors okay. and a length of string. Well, to 15 inches. Wow, this is really a lot of household paper. You're also going to need some paper money. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, okay, I got the paper, I got the pen. I'm going to stop the show for <laughs> one minute to allow you the time to get these materials like assembled. Virtual show. I'll meet you right back here. <laughs> um, I'm going to do um, I'm not kidding. this. Just you let have me know if you can seconds. still hear it. Or... No. Hear it anymore? Can't hear it anymore? No, now I can hear it. Now you can still hear it? Yeah, it's, it's the lighter. It's lighter, though. Okay. If I do this, can you still hear it? No. Okay, so yeah, then I need to go back to here. Yeah, it's really cool because even though he's, that's, that's a great way to Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure what happened there. Blaze somehow, uh, he opened Mike's comment and uh, he vanished. So here he is. We will get him back. That is the first time I've done that. That is amazing that I've never made that mistake. I was like, whoa, what happened to Blaze? Um, yeah, let me add this. Um, but that's a, a great point that Mike said about how he, you know, he blended comedy into his dark persona. In that, mm -hmm. like, he's this kind of like vampire esque, really creepy, um, and also speaks as though he's from a different era, like a different generation. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, he does such a great job of like putting himself into this setting and interacting with people and just coming off like funny when, you know, and, and engaging when he's not being dark and sinister, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's some good, he's got some good comedy relief almost where he knows that it's funny and any lets the audience laugh with it so you have got your materials assembled and we are ready to resume our endeavors this next experiment is a bit more abstract in that it involves a host of variables determined by you so far it seems to be going quite well mr maven indeed it does why don't you help me introduce this next piece Certainly. Mr. Maven? Yes? I must say, I didn't think the bit with the Italian waiter was funny. Apparently, you have not been programmed to appreciate comedy. Oh, no, Mr. Maven. I have been programmed to appreciate comedy. That is precisely why I brought this up. We'll talk about it later. In the meantime, just introduce the piece. Is this one supposed to be funny? Not particularly. Oh, good. Like, <laughs> very self-aware. <laughs> For this next test, you will require three pieces of paper. On the first piece of paper, draw a large circle. Do you know how many On the next, specials Max Draw has? a large triangle. Not sure. On the last, draw a square. I think I can handle this from here. Are you sure? Trust me. You will also require an envelope and three pieces 
of currency. You'll need a $1 bill, a $5 bill, and a large denomination bill. Now, for this last, a 10 or a 20 will be fine, but a 50 or a 100 is much better. Place the pieces of paper into a row in front of you. Put the circle to your left, the triangle to the center, and the square to your right. Now, distribute the bills, one inside of each design. The order of the bills is entirely up to you. Is that the order you wish to start with? Fine, we'll work with that. I'm going to switch some of the bills around for you, even though I don't know where they happen to be, so start by switching the $1 bill with the $5 bill. Good, now, Switch what is in the... Oh, this is great at playing through the camera. Triangle. Mm. To make it seem like he's looking at what now, you're doing and stuff. Five dollar yeah. bill with like whatever really, happens really to be to its right. If there's nothing to the right of the like five dollar bill, so engaged. obviously mm -hmm. do a switch. In the same fashion, if, uh, if you would switch the large denomination bill with whatever is to its left. Perfect. Switch the $1 bill with whatever happens to be to its right. Good. Now, switch the bill in the triangle with the one in the square. And the one in the square with the one in the circle. Yes, at this point, you've made a mess of everything. I suppose I have no idea where any bill happens to be. I wouldn't know the location of the... Uh, Oh, for example, the large denomination bill. But take your envelope and pick up the bill inside the square. Seal it inside the envelope and then send the Does envelope. Does he do anything for people? Oh, yeah. Later yeah, on. Yeah. 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 To Max Maven, Hollywood, California. <laughs> Remember, the post office will not deliver mail without proper postage. Mr. Maven. Yes. Marjorie Jejun, Intra Global Survey Systems Incorporated. Oh, the polling organization. Yes. yes, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, while you've been busy watching me, this woman has been busy watching you. Oh, well, not me personally. No, no, no. You see, Ms. Jejun represents an organization of several thousand field agents. And at this very moment, those agents are spread out all over the country, determining your reaction to this program. So, how are we doing? Oh, so far we seem to be a big hit. I like your hair. Thank you. It must be difficult to keep it properly groomed. Well, actually, tell me about the survey results. Oh, yes, of course. Follow me. The typical reaction nationwide seems to be quite enthusiastic. However, Mr. Maven, I would be less than honest if I didn't bring up the negative side. Negative side? Do you do it yourself, or does someone else take care of it? Take care of what? Your hair. Mrs. Hsu, you referred to a negative public reaction. Would you kindly elaborate? Oh, yes, of course. It seems that 17% of the audience did not understand the ending to your last routine. You mean with the money? Yes. Well, I thought I'd made it quite clear that I was able to locate the large denomination bill from among the others. Perhaps you are a bit too subtle for certain parts of the country. What the heck? This it's, guy was just so aware. So, so funny. Like, wow. you know, this is going to sound funny, but it he almost reminds me of like uh, like a Rodney Dangerfield or something where it's like, I mean, who was a classic as well, but did so many movies where it was like kind of like dry humor almost or whatever, but it, or like slapstick comedy, but uh but it's like so good. Like just the interaction that he's having with the woman and stuff is, is great. It's really, really good. And the thing is that so much acting that you see in magic, uh, like by magicians feels very forced and fake, but mm. it's actually done really well. Like he yeah, just he did a good job. He is that character. And it makes sense because he chose to live his life as that character. Mm. And it reminds me of something that Whit Hayden uh, talked about um, is that he, he, for a while, you know, he originally had a Southern accent with Hayden, and then he decided to adopt like a standard American accent so that he could be more marketable as a performer. So then he 
adopts this accent. He practices it for a while and he makes it his whole life. Like he has this accent. He drops a Southern accent entirely, even when he's not performing. Mm -hmm. And then when he got to a certain age where he felt like he could no longer pull off this like suave character, he then decided to adopt an even more like Southern accent than he originally had a thicker yeah. Southern accent and then become pop Hayden. And now he speaks with that accent, regardless of if it's he's his performance or in real life. And it's yeah. so that Max Maven, I wonder at what point he decided that he was going to make this character his whole life, because that is a big commitment that like, mm -hmm. yes, you're cutting your hair like that for the performance, but you also are cutting your hair like that in life. And you're speaking in yeah. a certain a certain received kind of pronunciation, like this kind of broadcaster, but you know, 1940s broadcaster voice, you know, that, um, that makes it feel as though he's, you know, he's a, like a fully formed character, but he's of a different, a different decade, like a different century. Like he's not, yeah. he's not of this time. And, uh, it's really interesting, like how he, um, you know, he does. None of it feels like very forced acting. It feels like no, no, very no. He did a really good job acting. Such as, oh well, no wonder. <laughs> oh yes, there's one more thing. Yes. According to our calculations, thirty-two percent of the viewing audience did not think the bit with the Italian waiter was very funny. Keep up the good work, Mr. Juno. <laughs> We've come to the musical portion of our program. But wait, let's get you involved. I'll let you pick the music. To do this, we'll make further use of those three pieces of paper from our last this experiment. This would have been wildly so successful if it came out. And on the paper COVID. with the circle, pick the number <laughs> It's one. a virtual show that he filmed. Because <laughs> everything is done with the right. audience. It's awesome. The number two. And in the square... Write down the number three. Like it's so far ahead of its time. I will deal with the flip sides of your pieces of paper. On the back of the circle, print the number four. And on the reverse side of the triangle, put down the number. This is OBS before there was OBS. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is Magic Mask, and man. Yeah. On the reverse of this the crazy. square. Print the number. This is, this is 84. So this is before like before I was born even. So this is like it's a long time ago. Mm. <laughs> that's so, that's so great. So good. That's Please. what I mean, like Rod Rodney Dangerfield. Like they would have something like that. Like but mix them around so that I don't know the order of those three numbers. Wow, man. Good. Now take the center paper and turn it over. At this point, you are looking at three different numbers, but I have no idea as to which three they are. I want you to add those numbers together. And in so doing, you've come up with a number from one to 15. And we're going to use that number to pick a song. Please observe this list of 15 musical selections and remember the one that falls at your number. Did you choose a song? Good. So did I. Okay, well, Yankee Doodle right. Dandy. Yeah, Yankee Doodle Dandy. All right. The gate. <laughs> I have his hairline. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is a. Uh... I mean, it is like. The crazy, the crazy thing is like people always ask like during COVID, like, do you have a show, a mentalism show that's pre-recorded so that they could just show people, right? Mm. And, and everybody was like, no, 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 I got to do it live. Mm. Right. But he literally did a mentalism show pre-filmed pre-recorded that yeah. you could you know which is um like i said way ahead of its time it's amazing 
Yeah. It's and like, most of it is just interacting with whoever is watching, which is, which is great. Something a bit more. Yeah, it's really well done. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing that he can be so engaging just himself for the camera. Himself. That's like, it. He's a really interesting character and stuff, man. Yeah. Cause I, I kind of, um, I kind of, you know, was just familiar with more recent Max Maven stuff, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, it's like, I understood everyone was like, he's a legend, but I wasn't exactly familiar with some of his early things that really made him, you know, and cemented him in that, you know, position. And it makes mm -hmm. so much sense why people like are, are so influenced by him, you yeah. know, as a list, because like he was doing some like really innovative things at the time to do a whole show of mentalism with no audience. You're just mm -hmm. talking to the camera. Like, wow. Because... I remember, and, and it's it's almost an hour long. Yeah, like most people, like you think of a TV show today, it would be like twenty minutes. You'd be like, okay, I could do twenty minutes, but to do a full hour, yeah, or just about an hour is nuts. And people probably got so excited at home to be able to like you know just gr like find random things around the house and like interact mm -hmm. with in the TV. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mister Maven. Yes. The dance number was wonderful. Thank you so much. And now for something a bit more intimate. What we're going Mr. to Maven. do. Mr. Maven. What is it now? You can't follow a big production number with an intimate piece. Why not? It doesn't sustain viewer interest. <laughs> Fine. Now for something a bit more intimate. You're losing them. It's Eight like a TikTok minutes. video. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You're losing them. It's more than 15 seconds. Open it up. Yeah. Try something on a larger scale. All right. Let's go. It's a world of its own. There's so much to do. We've got the joy that dreams are made of. Vegas is waiting for you. No one does it better. No one does it better. No one does it better. And here we are at the fabulous Tropicana Hotel and Casino, a stimulating environment where we can try... Mr. Maven? Yes? Steven Rogers, accounting department. Mr. Maven, I'm sorry, but you cannot shoot this scene here in this casino. Why not? Well, there's no room in the budget. Silly, I've got the budget right here. It's all spelled uh, out. Oh, Mr. Maven, apparently you have not seen the revised budget. <laughs> ah. You spent too much money on the musical number. Too many dancers. There are only two of them. Video overdubs. It was a technical stunt. Mr. Maven, if you persist on shooting this scene here, we're going to have to cut the jungle number. I can't lose the jungle number. It's integral to the show as a whole. Well, then I suggest you shoot the next scene in Los Angeles. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, this way. Have fun. What? Let's get the roulette board or roulette uh, thing in the back wall. Who produced this? <laughs> Cocktails. Care for a game of chance? For this next experiment, you'll need a deck of playing cards. Hey. Shuffle the cards thoroughly. You can shuffle them in any manner you like. Try not to drop them on the floor because that does slow things down. He appeared on an episode of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We're going to use these Bel -Air. cards to play a yeah. curious version of poker. Now, as most of you know, the game of poker is ordinarily one of luck. However, in this case, as I think you'll soon discover, luck has very little to do with it. Like 80 decks shuffling your behind cards the camera. Face down. And then deal out two face down hands of poker. In other words, two piles of five cards each. 
one on your left and one on your right. This is definitely not a full deck. I hope you don't need one. The rest of the deck is placed aside. No, I need just five cards. Take a look at the top card of the pile on your left. Please remember that card, because we're going to need to know what it is later on. Once you've committed the card to memory, replace it on top of the left-hand pile. Okay. Now pick up the pile on your right. And here I'm going to give you an option. Because you're going to deal some cards from this pile away to the deck that you placed aside. But I leave it to you to determine whether you deal away one, two, three, or four cards. The choice is yours. And you don't have to tell me how many you're dealing away. Okay. That's your secret. The remaining cards in your hand are replaced onto the left-hand pile on the table. This buries your card somewhere in the middle of the combined pile. And remember, I don't know how many cards are now in that combined pile. Pick up the pile and turn it face up. Now I'm going to have you mix the cards in this pile, but this time I'll direct the mixing procedure. Follow carefully. Deal the top card to the table. Transfer the next card from the top to the bottom of the packet. Deal the next card to the table, the next card to the bottom, and so forth. Continue with the procedure until you run out of cards. Now you've mixed the pile, and I still don't know how that many cards That was a great angle to do Your that card, at as well. Mm -hmm. Shooting it from beneath the glass table. Yeah. Yeah, that was really nice. It is lost. Take the combined pile and turn it face down on the table. Now, remove the top card of the pile and hold it face down in your hand. Say the name of the card you remembered out loud. Five of hearts. No. The card you're holding is not the one you just named, so you can put it off to one side. Mm. Pick up the next card from the table. Ooh, this is great. And call out the name of the card you remembered. Five of hearts. Mm, no, no, that's not your card either. Place it aside. Take the next card from the table pile. And again, call out the name of the card you remembered. What? Five of hearts. Again? Five yes, hearts. the card you are holding is the one you just named. Take a look. Damn, it is me. Well, Mr. Jun, how was the general reaction to that experiment? Oh, I think you That's got great. it. That's great. That's a great. Thank you got him now. Your basic bewilderment and your high level freak yeah, out. Yeah, that was actually like once. It's really good. Anything else? Well, yes. Sure. Yeah. How do you keep it so symmetrical? Keep what so symmetrical? <laughs> your hair. Your hair. You know, it's getting kind of stuffy in here. Why don't we go outside for some fresh air? These are the real questions. These are the real secrets, Max. You've got to tell us. <laughs> we have been on a hunting expedition, and we've managed to capture a huge, ferocious, dangerous beast. Bring on the beast. Now, it's no fun hunting alone, so I'd like to invite you to participate in this expedition. Why don't you tell them what they'll need and I'll help the Mavenettes. For this test, you will require five pieces of paper. Index cards are best, but any paper will do. You will also need a pen or pencil. All right, on your first piece of paper, write down the word lion. Place that piece of paper aside, writing side up. On the next piece of paper, print the word panther. That one goes on top of the first piece. On your third piece of paper, put the word jaguar. Now that's a tough one, so pay attention. Fine. Put that on top of the first two. On the fourth piece of paper, put down the word tiger. On top of the pile it goes. On the final piece of paper, write the word duck. And that goes on top of all. 
Pick up the packet of five pieces. Turn the entire packet writing side down. And now, if you would, cut the packet. In other words, just as if you were using playing cards, transfer as many or as few as you like from the top to the bottom of the group. Good. Deal the pieces of paper into a face-down row on the table going from your left over to your right. Gentlemen, kindly hold it down. Thank you. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, of course. You have a row of five papers face down in front of you. And as you cut the packet before you dealt them out, I don't know the location of any one of those uh, dangerous beasts. Take the paper over to the right end of the row, turn it over, and place it off to one side. Now, that is not the beast we're going after. But that exotic cat is going to lead us to our prey. He's like the American one. I want you to reason. spell the name of the beast you just like, placed aside the, uh, by tapping your like finger the, along uh, the remaining row of four. Tapping book. from left to right, one yeah. tap for each letter of but the name. His, now, if you go... Even though they are procedure heavy... Like some of these routines definitely feel way more brief and way less like they feel like there's way less procedure than something like you would find in one of the in verbal magic, you know? Yeah. As I said, he's very good at explaining pretty mm. simply what he wants you to do and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Clearly. And stuff. Yeah. It's, and, uh, and like it's it's how, they videotaped helped as, how they videotaped it as well really helped. Like oh, he yeah. said, like the, the see through table, like looking up dealing the cards down and stuff yeah it's, it's like and he has the whole joke about like you know that he can't afford to film it in vegas so he has to do it in la mm -hmm. but then that gives him the excuse to step into that room that has the glass table instead of the roulette table and then yeah. you get to do that instruction for that procedure yeah. better you know so yeah it's well done go back to the left and continue tapping you've arrived at one of the remaining beasts that is our target Hold up that piece of paper so that I can read it. A little higher, please. Yes, that's the one. Open the crate. Stand back. Back into the crate. Back to the back. Close the crate. Yeah. This so is the very latest in television thing, technology. Yeah. Observe. <laughs> what a special. I have brought you to this exotic locale in order that we may explore me, the signore, signore, please and you pay please <laughs> signore, please it's a great callback oh and he can just delete him he can just control it with the remote come on in space closer we are going to explore the ancient mysterious science of astrology of astrology oh i want you to think of a number any number from 10 to 20. Place your finger on the first pink circle, spring, and say one. Move your finger to the next circle, summer, and say two. Move to autumn and say three. Go to winter on four. Now move into the first yellow circle, Aries, on five. Move to the right, into Taurus. We were supposed to just think of a number at first. Continue counting your way around the yellow circles until you arrive. Yeah, at your between ten and twenty. Now you're going to count to your number again, but this time you will count around in the opposite direction, counterclockwise. Start your count on the circle you just finished on, starting with one. Count up to your number. Is it a new number or first the same as the first? 
Same number. Now you've arrived at a random astrological sign. Quite obviously, it would be impossible okay. for me to tell each and every one of you your individual signs. There are far too many of you. I can, however, tell you my birth sign, and I'm highly flattered that you chose it. Sagittarius. Hmm. <laughs> this is a cool special. I feel violated. <laughs> Mind boggling. Yeah, this was crazy. Like back then, right? Mm hmm. You know, some people just can't stay away from the gaming tables. And for those of you who feel that way, I've arranged another game using the playing cards. So take your deck of playing cards and shuffle the cards thoroughly. I mean, just imagine, like... Now, cut the pack into three this, approximately um, equal piles. I just, like, I cannot imagine Choose one like, of how the piles. far ahead of this time. This take was. the other two piles and put them off to one side. We won't be needing them. At this point, all that I know is that the pile in front of you has between 10 and 20 cards. But I'd like you to know exactly how many cards there are. So hit the pause button and count the cards in that pile. Five. Now you have a random number. But I want that number to be completely random. So let's do it this way. You are thinking of a two-digit number. Add those two digits together. For example, if your number were 12, you would add 1 plus 2 to give a total of 3. Whatever your total, deal that many cards <laughs> from the pile in your hands to the discard pile on the side. Good. Now we have a completely random situation. Hold that pile in your left hand. You're going to deal some cards from the pile in your hand onto the table, making two groups, one to your left, one to your right. However, I'm going to give you a choice here, because you can deal one card to the left and one card to the right, or two cards to the left and two cards to the right, or three and three, or four and four. The decision is yours. Hmm. Having done that, you now have one pile to your left, one pile to your right, and something left in your hands. Take either of the two piles from the table, and put it with the discards off to one side. Now pick up the remaining tabled pile and look at the bottom card of that pile. Remember that card. It's yours. Take that pile and place it on top of the cards in your left hand. At this point, I have no idea as to how many cards there are in the combined packet you're holding. You are thinking of a card and I have no idea what it is or where it is. Nevertheless, I'm going to find it. Now, who's going to find your card? I said, who's going to find your card? That's right. Max Maven. Max Maven. So we'll use my name as the way of getting there. We're going to spell my name together. And with each letter of the spell, you will transfer one card from the top to the bottom of your packet. M A X M A V E N Now, what was the card you remembered a moment ago? <clears throat> well, if you turn over the top card of the packet, King of Hearts. I think you'll see. I've indeed found it. <laughs> Ready for oh, that's something an else? To a diamond. All what right. the heck is that? Let's try something involving that. Uh, the specials. Yeah. Specials. Now, this time we won't use. <laughs> yeah, my buddy created these. Four wow. cards, one of each suit. So look through your pack and take out any spade. Now, any heart. Any club. Now, the thing is, I've seen a lot of Max Maven doing card effects and things. Uh, does he. Did he also do. A lot of uh, routines that were like 
just kind of billet style mentalism, you know, just uh, like pure mind, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I know he did a lot of card stuff as well. I'm sure he did tons of stuff on billets and stuff as well. Yeah, someone said uh, they use his in, billet routine. Yeah, here. but I mean, in specials, I don't know if I've seen him do mm. anything that way, but uh, but I know he definitely had work on them. So, yeah. Desire whenever I perform with billets was hungry and hungover said. So, yeah. I'll check out Desire because, uh, yeah, I would love to see like what his presentation and things are for for divining that kind of information, yeah. you know, like personal information for people. Yep. And any diamond. So we need one of each. Yeah. I mean, I know Max had a DVD back in the day called Nothing, I think it was called. possibilities with this type of new microcircuitry. Where it was like going to a show. I know Bill was part of that. It was like you could literally go to a show with nothing. Or like if you lost your luggage on a plane, like to go to the dollar store almost and like put a show together. What was it called? Nothing. Nothing. Huh? And it was like, carry a show with nothing. You are now holding four cards, one of each suit. Take the spade and place it face up onto the table in front of you. On top of that, place the heart face up. Okay. On top of those, the club. And on top of all, we're already in the diamond. Order. Right. Pick up the four cards, holding them face up. Take the top card, the diamond, and turn it over on top of the others. Now, cut the packet. In other words, transfer as many or as few as you like from the top to the bottom. Now, the thing is, I wonder what this special is like for people who did not have a deck of cards at home. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like you just can't follow along. Well, I mean, they got a piece of paper and stuff. They were able to. That was a good thing is he didn't use like everything all in one mm. one go. Right. It was like, OK, if you have papers and stuff and. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting how like there were virtual shows that uh, that mailed people decks of cards, you know. Yeah, Magazine. yeah, because that's the thing is, yeah, a lot of people now to find a deck of cards in your house maybe maybe difficult. Yeah, back then it was definitely much more popular. Go ahead. Yeah. Take the top two cards together as one, and turn them over on. I top missed of the first step. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was take any number and toss it on the bottom to the bottom. Go, go back just a little bit. Do you like from now? Cut the packet. In other words, transfer as many or as few as you like from the top to the bottom. Good. Okay. Take the top two cards together as one, and turn them over on top of the packet. Mm. Once again, cut the cards anywhere you like. Now turn the entire packet over. Let's repeat the procedure. Take the top two cards together as one and turn them over on top of the others. Once again, cut the packet anywhere you like. Now, at this point, I'm going to give you an option. You can repeat the procedure again, which is to say, take the two cards together as one that are on top of the packet, turn them over on top of the others, and then cut the packet. Or you can do nothing at all. The choice is entirely up to you, and to give you the freedom of doing this, I won't watch. Mm. All done? Let's confuse the issue just a little bit more and make it more difficult for me. Take the top single card and turn it over on top of the others. Okay. Now, take the top two cards together as one and turn them over on top of the others. Mm. Take the top three cards together as one and turn them over on top of the other. Now turn over the entire four card packet. At this point, you have really mixed things up and the location or condition of any one of those four cards is completely beyond my ken. Nevertheless, I think I've got this situation figured out. It could be that all of your cards are face down or perhaps there's one face up or two or three or all four. But I believe you will find I am correct when I say that only one of your cards is reversed. Spread out your packet. You'll see that I'm right. Now, most people will be satisfied with that result. But I know there are a few of you who are saying to yourselves, I wish he'd tell me the suit of that reversed card. 
All right? Just for you. <laughs> Dr. Maven, you're wanted <laughs> in surgery. Dr. Maven, you're Her wanted heartbeat. in surgery. <laughs> yeah. I heard you the first time. Oh, yeah, he's going to do uh, psychic surgery. You will need four pieces of paper. Maybe. Look, makes it look like it anyways. Any paper will do. You will also need a pen or pencil, a die, plus a pair of scissors. Take your pencil and draw a line down one of the index cards. On another card, draw a large X across the entire face of the card. On a third card, draw two parallel lines down the surface of the card. He looks so different without On the, the hair. Card, I was going to say, it, it's so weird looking, right? Like, yeah, he almost looks he like just, Chris Angel. Yeah, he just looks like a totally different character. Hold all four cards face down and mix them thoroughly. Mr. Maven. Dr. Maven. Dr. Maven, the jungle number was most enjoyable. Thanks. But I don't understand what we're doing in an operating room. Don't worry about it. I mean, going to the moon at least made some sort of a logical connection with the experiment, even if it was an expensive setup for such a minor bit of humor. Why don't you take it up with Mr. Rogers in accounting? All right. Take your shuffled set of four cards and hold them face down. Then take your scissors and sever the cards neatly in half. This, of course, will give you two groups of four half cards. Hold those groups face down and place either group on top of the other group. Wait, is this like leverage? A pile I, of I, was say, I wonder if anybody at home did this part, though. He's like, cut no, your cards in half. <laughs> no. This time without using the scissors. In other words, cut them just as if you were cutting a set of playing cards, transferring as many yeah, or as few like as you like here, from the top mm -hmm. to the bottom of the packet. Having done that, take the top card and deal it face down onto the table. Take yeah. the next card, deal it face down on top of the first. The third card goes on top of that and the fourth card on top of that. The remaining four card group goes onto the table next to the first pile, but you can put it to your left or your right. That choice is up to you. Now, I'm going to lead you in a series of actions, but you have a great deal of leeway. Take the top card of either of the two piles and transfer it from the top to the bottom of that pile. That will be fine. Uh, let's do it again. Take the top card of either pile and transfer it from the top to the bottom of that pile. Hmm. That's cool. You can switch and choose whatever. Turn over the top card of the right-hand pile. Okay. I'm going to have to make a small adjustment here. Uh, take the top card of the left-hand pile and transfer it to the bottom of that pile. Hmm. Fine. Now turn over the top card of the left-hand pile. We have a perfect match with the right-hand pile. So far, so good. Mr. Maven. Dr. Maven. Dr. Maven, I spoke with Mr. Rogers. He doesn't understand what you're doing in an operating room either. Tell him it's cheaper than a Las Vegas casino. Mr. Maven, you're a very strange man. Thank you. And here I was beginning to think you didn't like me. Well, let's continue. We've made a perfect match. You have two face-up pieces, and they do match precisely. So take those two face-up pieces and set them off to one side. We won't need them anymore for this experiment. That leaves in front of you two face-down piles of three pieces each. Pick up either one of those two piles and place it on top of the other pile, thus giving you a six-piece pile. You with me so far? Pick up the six-piece pile this and deal it out so into a row face down on the table. Now, you may deal this row um, from your left to your right or from your right to your present. left. The choice is entire. Oh, it seems really interesting just to see that this was done in 1984. What? Die? No, the patient isn't going to die. But that is exactly what we need for the next phase of this experiment. A die. So take your die and roll it Honestly, on the Honestly, this is better than... 
thus arriving at a, a random number. And if you look at that <laughs> number, you like it, you can change your mind. Whatever you. Well, decide. the production level is amazing. Oh yeah. Like to oh, think yeah. this was back then. Count to that position from the left end of the row. Count to the it's card almost, in the almost almost four four no interaction. and turn the card yeah. face it's up. It's almost four years ago. In the row. Now take a look at the number on the bottom of the die. And whatever that number is, count to that position in the yeah, row like again, there was starting one from the left end that of the I, row. I missed out on turn the card in that position face up. And once I mean, again, well, we got I, a perfect I think the match. budget didn't end up working out That's either. But like they were, okay, I'm they were asking for Take those two face up pieces, put them aside. We don't need them anymore. We have four mm -hmm. pieces left. Instead of, Obviously, my task um, is to try to match up those four pieces into the two pairs and do that. So if you would, take the card on the on the right end of the row. Take the card on the right end of the row, turn it face up. Okay, uh, so the one to match that would be in the position, come on, I'm sweating, in the position uh, uh, second from, no, 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 in the position on the very left end of the row. Turn over the one on the left end of the row. Yes, it matches. That's a perfect match. Okay, which means the last two match also. In other words, this operation has been a complete success. <laughs> that was wonderful. That's hilarious because you don't see the doctor's hairline at all, and then it's like oh. now Max gets up. It's like a different person, but he's been Doctor Max all the time. It's or Doctor Maven. That's great. Aren't you going to ask me about my hair? Work to do. <laughs> I think our rapport has reached a point where we can try something really unusual. Something involving a host of variables. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was still thinking about the hospital sketch. The finish was very good, Mr. Maven. For this next test, you will require a sheet of paper, a pencil, and a pair of scissors. Thank you. You're welcome. Take your piece of paper and fold it in half. Neatness counts. Now, fold it in half again. And in half one more time. Those of you who are students of mathematics will realize that you've now folded this paper into eight separate rectangles. Unfold your paper. And take your pen because we are going to fill information inside of each of these spaces. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, place the letter A. Next to that, I'm really curious the letter like how B. Now don't get ahead of me. Builds, you know, to the right like of that, reserved... the letter C. And after A that, special. the letter mm -hmm. D. Now we'll move down to the lower right-hand corner and put in the letter E. Next to that, the letter F, then the letter G, and finally, the letter H. Those of you who have been paying attention will realize that these are the first eight letters of the Western alphabet. And as it happens, there are over 40 <laughs> different words and that can be formed. That is great. That's like when you were on Omega and you were your just like again. asking that guy to teach you. Guy. I'm yeah. and he actually went along with unit. it. But this time you yes, don't Phil have and Johnny, to fold so this the paper is a special from 1984. In other words, you might choose to make your first did. fold along the long yeah, axis. Just passed away. And yes, from sir. there, you might choose to accordion pleat the paper. Or perhaps you would care to fold the paper in on itself. Or maybe you'd like to make the first fold uh, off-center in this fashion. And then fold inward. Or fold outward. The point is, there are several dozen different ways in which you can refold this paper down to a single unit. You will choose one, please. Fold your paper down to a single unit in any fashion you like. And then That's when you've nice. done that, take mm -hmm. the shears. Oh, and kids, remember, I'm a professional. Be careful when you use these shears, all right? Trim off the four edges of the fold. Also, what does that paper. mean? Like, I'm a professional, you in what? doing this, you will wind <laughs> up with eight separate rectangles of paper, each one bearing a different letter of the alphabet. 
Now, depending on the way that you folded your paper back to a single unit, that will determine which of these letters are now face up or face down. That's really Sort nice. your papers into those two groups, the face up letters and the face down letters. Now, the law of averages tells you that you will probably have four face up and four face down. In your particular case, you may have three and five or two and six, whatever. Sort them into the two groups and then choose either one of those groups. Study the letters in the group you've just chosen, because I want you to take those letters and try to form a word. Now, if at all possible, try to use all of the letters in your group to form that word. If you have bad luck and have a set of letters you can't make a word out of, throw them away and try the other set. Take your time in using all the letters to form a word. I'll wait. All done? <laughs> That's interesting because you now have a word in your even though he is doing something that is like a very simple procedure and things, he's not and although his character is it, that's a very intense stare to mm -hmm. <laughs> even though his character is very intense and things, it doesn't come off as condescending even when he's giving very, very simple instructions. Like at the very beginning, he said, hold out your right hand. For those of you who aren't sure, that's this one. And like turned and showed yeah. what right hand was. And it's like that can come off as very condescending to be like, I'm a mentalist. I'm so smart. And you don't even know what your right hand is. But he does it in a very, very does it way. Yeah. It is a, yeah, it's a comedic way of doing it almost where it's like you get attached to him. There's an emotional attachment with him along this journey. In your mind. And I'm going to ask you to send that word to me. Don't say it out loud. Instead, hear it in your and own And I like this, how the story, yeah, you do say get a connection with him. And the story is really like, he's just a guy trying to make a TV special. <laughs> and very self-aware, you know? Cage. 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 A profound success. Mm. That's a really cool routine, though. Mm. I like that one a lot. We began our program with some. Because it feels so random. You could fold it however you want. You Experiments know? in mm -hmm. physical control. Let's return to that concept, but with a more sophisticated variation. For this test. You will require a length of string, at least 12 inches long, and some sort of weight to tie onto the string. You may use a set of keys, a piece of jewelry, or the scissors which were used in previous tests. It's going to be a pendulum? Now, tie your object you to the end of your length of string. <laughs> Is the waiter finally going to catch him? I own you. At the end of the special. Or go the string. <coughs> Dead, the length of chain. But then again, I've had more time to prepare. When your object is tied to the end of your cord, hold the object suspended in front of you so that it hangs free. Focus your attention on the object and concentrate on the sound of my voice. And I will suggest to you that that object is starting to move. Focus your concentration. The object is starting to swing back and forth, back and forth, wider and wider and wider, back and forth. Use your mind to make the object swing like a pendulum, back and forth. And as I continue to suggest to you, you will notice that the nature of the swing begins to change. It opens out into a circular pattern, swinging around and around, wider and wider. And now the rotation becomes smaller. The circle closes in, smaller and smaller and smaller, until the pendulum is once again at rest. 
Okay, that was actually really crazy because the timing was perfect. Cool. Yeah, it's time yeah. Time for one last that one. Wild. And this one is going to take a great deal of concentration on my part. For I intend to try to follow your every choice. Because it was literally, every as he said, it's going to start getting tighter if circles. And it did. And then the line, once he said at rest, it was all for naught. Consider this assortment of simple designs. Come here to your TV set. Look the designs over carefully. Place your finger onto any design. Now you will spell out the name of your chosen design, moving your finger from space to space for each letter of the spell. You can move left or right, up or down. You may not move diagonally. Spell out the name of your design. Now that you have finished spelling, I feel confident that you are not on the rectangle. So we will eliminate that space. Once a space has been eliminated, you may no longer move there. But you still have eight spaces in which to play. Move your finger. The thing is that there's something five that applies times. to anybody here. Because if, even if you didn't have certain props, like you can always follow them. I'm, I'm certain you are not on the circle. So we will eliminate that. Move two times. Ah, you came awfully close, but you are not now on the triangle. So we can safely do away with that space. Move three times. Yes, eliminate the arrow and the diamond. We're down to four spaces. Move three more times. Ah, a moment ago you were on the square, but not now, so we can do away with that one. Move once, and we'll get rid of the heart and the cross. A rather appropriate conclusion. For after all, you are the star of this program. Your participation is responsible for my success. And I want to thank you for getting involved. So until next time, always remember to think good thoughts. You never know who might be listening. Is, is the waiter coming back? Is he going to get it? Like after the credits, did he uh, did he already beat like all the Marvel movies? The waiter's coming back. No, that would have been good though. Signora Maven. Yeah, that's uh. That's great. Yeah, man. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Uh way ahead of its time mm -hmm. yeah that was uh that was really incredible because like he he was so innovative and it's uh yeah it's just really it's really sad that the magic community has lost somebody who was so amazing but yeah uh, fiddle and johnny fiddle yeah. and johnny said his historical knowledge of effects and routines and their origins is vast and will be missed. Yeah, for sure. I set in on a couple of lectures uh, for other people with Max there. And Max, if someone didn't know the history of something, they just asked Max during it. So, mm. uh, and he usually was able to, to tell right away. So, um, yeah, a wealth of knowledge. And uh, yeah, that was really great. Uh, mm -hmm. Tigger T, the waiter, did not come back. Uh, I thought he might as well, but. Um, but uh, yeah, and John said that it was it was a lot of math and name lengths, but uh, but figuring out all that work and doing the work on all that stuff is crazy. And like I said, it's the first I I would say that's the first special magic special that we've ever watched. Mm -hmm. I've ever watched that completely did not do magic for anybody else or yeah. a live audience. Like, yeah, and you have other people involved. Like, he could have done magic for one of the other actors or actresses or something, but yeah. instead just had them as part of the ambience, ambiance so that he could then create these moments with the audience at home. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah, really. Is, I thought it was really neat. 
It's definitely really neat. I mean, obviously now, uh, obviously now there's a lot of, um, you know, it's a bit slower compared to like more, you know, entertainment nowadays, you know, like yeah. oh, yeah. I'm curious, like if something like that would have been able to do well nowadays, if it aired or if people just have yeah. too short of an attention span to follow along with these kind of things. But if you were to hear that in a zoom call and especially if every so often he had interaction with whoever was mm-hmm. in zoom, you know, like just saying somebody's name that would absolutely have crushed. As- would have crushed. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, even nowadays, like to do one of those tricks or a couple of those routines and stuff in a special still would have been, would have been awesome, you know, like, um, cause he had some really good ones, like, you know, grab the deck of cards and stuff, which I feel like even if Blaine did something like that in a TV special and was like, Hey, let me, let me do this for you at home, you know, cause there was a couple of them that were really good that were like this is great like yeah short procedure so, and like it feels yeah. really random. i i really liked the cage thing of like the cage thing was paper was however great. You want. that was like, really really smart good. like i would want to use that <laughs> for a virtual mm-hmm. you know, if i was still doing more virtual shows i would have definitely wanted to do that me too i, I feel like people could have just rewatched this special when the pandemic hit and then just ripped off the whole show timeless magic 100% yeah it's interesting about the structure uh you know because i was curious about how he was going to close the thing you know and Mm -hmm. the effect that he did there at the end is very similar to the the thing with like the the nations and stuff before yeah Yeah, that's what i said he had like three i think during the during the special that were were very similar where it's you know counting or moving different things but you know he did like the uh, astrology sign and stuff like that. And then the countries, uh, I think he did one other one as well. So maybe yeah. he did four in there. The one, or if you tuned in midway through the special or something, then it's like, yeah, yeah, you, you get the experience of it, you know, and, and everybody got something that felt like, you know, Oh wow. How did this happen for them at home? Even if they didn't have scissors and a string or, you yeah. know, didn't have the pendulum thing was great though to have people do a pendulum at home yeah, yeah. like that would freak people out but especially back then like sitting in your living room and all of a sudden you get a pendulum going around and he's like it's now gonna stop and it, and it stops like dead stopped. time perfect yeah that was time yeah. so perfect like yeah. literally stopped on a dime and said that yeah no it's great it's really really good so yeah man guy's a legend uh and you can see why so uh you know it's done a ton of work with a ton of different people over the years so yeah yeah Yeah. and the thing is like when you watch back these kind of things from the 80s or or you watch back copperfield specials you realize how much creativity there was at that time and the fact that these people were really doing things that were innovative when they were given the opportunity to do a tv special and it's kind of sad how things haven't evolved as much as you would expect for oh, yeah. you know, modern TV specials. You know, and it's like the yeah. thing that blew up after this was making magic feel more like organic and make it feel more stripped down and natural, like street magic and about yeah. people. But before magic was about just the reactions, you know, that was the focus of Blaine it was more about like the production quality and about the magician himself. Yeah. And I feel like that was, you know, like a really, um, you know, a really great example of how you can do mentalism with that, you know, that format. For oh yeah. Well, that's a, is like usually with, with magic specials that we saw like Copperfield and stuff like that, like they are huge, huge productions, right? Like Copperfield is like when he's doing the straight jacket escape over top of the burning torches and stuff for like, you know, like that stuff is nuts, but he was always usually performing for what, from what I mean, I mean, there's ones that he didn't, but I was going to say, he's usually performing for an audience yeah. on, on the specials, right? Where this was like the first one where it was like super high production, like, and the best thing I like, I love when he partway through, he's like, we can't pull the jungle scene. It's imperative for the <laughs> <Yeah>. whole thing. <laughs> and and it's the like, scene is the guy in the duck suit. <laughs> the duck suit. That's it. It's great. But like 
to walk off. And that's what I said. It reminded me kind of like back in the day, like the slapstick, like Rodney Dangerfield movies and stuff where like, you know, you had to walk off camera and be like, excuse me, guys, you need to be quiet and stuff like or bring the bring the sound effects down. So that was great. That was really, really great. That Super great. fitting for that time. But I I mean, I still appreciate it now because it's yeah. like, oh, it's great. And it's kind of like that was like self-awareness, you know, it, that was real self-awareness back then. And it's interesting how, you know, then the Blaine self-awareness is like, we're going to just do one continuous shot and just be, you know, just be honest mm -hmm. and something. Uh, yeah. Where it was more like we're going to just be aware of the fact that we are filming a TV special and yeah. some people didn't get that last joke. All right, let's make a joke about the fact that people didn't get the last joke. Mm -hmm. you know, it's very well put together. And uh, he his character of like, he's this mastermind that's apparently already thought everything through and can influence you. So even, even what you were thinking about the special and the thoughts that you're having or the things that you're whispering to your friends about what you just saw, he then brings in the computer to say, yeah, to say that stuff. Yeah. Oh, he's already, he already knew what you were going to think. No, I know. Yeah. It was, they said it was really well thought out and well put together. And like you said, they, they literally thought of what people would say or do at home beforehand uh, to, to have that interaction with him and stuff as well, which is great. And like the lady asking him about his hair and stuff all the time. And then the last time he's like, you're not, you don't have any questions. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just, it's just good, but uh, all good. Um, hungry and hungover said, honestly, just the works of Bob Cassidy and Maven alone could give anyone a career in mentalism. Two giants gone, rest in peace to both. Yeah, yeah. agreed, agreed. And uh, Tigger was asking, who was the person that inspired you to start doing mentalism? That's a good question. I don't, I don't remember. I because I started doing magic like really, really young, mm -hmm. and like Copperfield was was definitely one of them back then, and Lance Burton and stuff. Yeah. Um, I got into mentalism. I, I mean, I mean, Bobby Mata, I seen in, in Toronto and stuff, but he wasn't like, I kind of seen him after I had already started doing mentalism. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I just like, honestly, I went to a magic shop and was like, oh, that's a cool trick. And it's more like mind reading, uh, and started doing that. And then, uh, I was working for an illusionist at the time. And so he carried 23,000 pounds of equipment to every show. Hmm. And I was doing something where I could, you know, read someone's mind with like a piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, I think I'm going to go in this direction and just dove in because I, I wanted to be able to travel around the country or with, with almost nothing. So, um, but uh but yeah and so that's why i went into mentalism but there i mean obviously like i seen max when i was a kid and stuff like that um but i probably didn't understand his stuff as much when i was like a young kid because i was really young when like i mean this this special that we watched tonight came out before i was even born so yeah um but uh but yeah <laughs> he did and he also like it didn't feel as though he was um I don't know. Like he, yes, he's claiming to have some kind of ability, but he's saying that he like is psychological and he can influence you and things, mm -hmm. and influence your decisions. Yeah. And nowadays, I feel like a lot of m mentalists are moving in the direction of like, all right, I'm not going to claim I can actually read your mind, but I'm going to say that through psychology or whatever, I can influence you or I can yeah. predict your decisions. And it's like, hey, that's what Maven was already doing quite a long time ago. And that's yeah. what Jim Brown was doing. And I think that those people realized the way that they could present mentalism uh, without claiming to have some ability that was maybe too unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they kind of really pioneered that and realized it a while ago. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's an important thing to do that as well, just because like, if you are telling someone that you're psychic or, you know, you, you know, stuff like that, it gets, to me, it's a dangerous, it's a slippery slope. It's the, uh, uh, what was that movie? Um, Nightmare Alley. It's yeah. nightmarely becoming the uh uh what was the what was how did they say it in that movie? I can't remember. Uh um when you well, I mean he just he says that you know you become a shut eye. Yeah, you know, the shut yeah, yeah. You become a shut eye, then you start lying to everyone because you start believing your own lies. You start believing that you're you're God, basically. Yeah. And, so I actually had an interesting experience that that reminds me of this past weekend on Sunday. So October 30th, 
I had a gig and it was an interesting gig. It was this private party and this woman had everyone wear white for the party. And it was in a, yeah. in, in a cemetery and she wanted me to wear all black. And there was also booked a, a, on the same gig was a tarot reader. And she said, she when I first met her, I was like, oh, hi, you know, and she said like, oh, and I was like, oh, are you doing like tarot reading and stuff? And at first I didn't have, I guess, an internal kind of reverse reaction <laughs> to like tarot reading because I was like, oh, yeah, I, I do tarot tricks sometimes like, you know, tarot reading, whatever. But then I was present for her telling her backstory to this other woman. And then I was like, oh, this makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah. I needed to step out of that conversation because, you know, someone was asking me about how I got into magic or whatever and was talking about, you know, performing. And then she started kind of volunteering, enjoying the conversation and telling about how she had this long career working, you know, in this like magazine and doing like, you know, all of these things with, you know, media and and had this long career successful and she decided to make this other pivot career wise. And then when she was this age, then she um, then she decided to become a psychic, which she al always knew she was from a child. And it was like, why didn't you mention that you always thought you were psychic before you yeah. went bragging about your career? But then she was like, all right, when I hit this age, then I, you know, I decided to become a psychic, which I always knew I was. And then the woman obviously asks like, oh, well, how did you know you were psychic? And she goes into this explanation of this backstory of visiting this house as a child and her being able to say like, oh, this person, this person died downstairs and this person, you know, was in, it was upstairs here. And there's a person saying to like, get these filthy squatters off my property. He's standing right there and stuff. And, uh, and it was just like, I got so uncomfortable <laughs> because I just realized like, Oh, when she said tarot reading, I was thinking like, oh, yeah, you know, like I might do a tarot thing, too. I might whip out like Oracle System by Ben. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I might whip out Oracle System and have some fun telling people that tarot stuff. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to not do that. And I almost wish I had brought it. Mm -hmm. And then after they got their tarot reading, I could blow their minds with so much something way crazier with tarot. Mm -hmm. I should have brought it. Yeah. Um, but it was just like it made me so uncomfortable because it, I, it made me think, you know, I could, if I wanted to, I could present myself that same way and come up with some kind of contrived backstory about having abilities and then prove it with actual feats. And mm -hmm. it was so interesting because it's like, I was performing straight that whole time doing strolling. And whenever I finished a new group would arrive and they would tell their friends and be like, come over and you got to meet the magician and stuff. And I was constantly performing that whole time. And whereas the the psychic she was off to her own area away from the party and she would do these sessions and the woman who booked me was like oh yeah you know the psychic she really she really needs a lot of long breaks doesn't she <laughs> I was like, the psych yeah she needs to recharge and harness her powers that's amazing yeah, like, she really needs these long breaks because it's so draining and it's like oh she really needs like she needs her quiet. Like we can't be too loud around her. She really needs to focus, and she can't. She asks that she not be disturbed while she's doing her readings and contact so, spirits or whatever. And it was just like, oh my god, this like makes me so uncomfortable because yeah. I could I could easily tell you that what I was doing was real and yeah. not tell you that it was entertainment and ask for long breaks and say that I need I need the time and oh can you make sure that you get me snacks and food and stuff so that I can contact the spirits better. Make sure you sort my M and M's. I did uh, I did two shows uh, last one last week and one the week before very private like intimate twenty people max um, in Caledonia week uh, there's a really cool restaurant and so we I asked the owner if I could do a show there after hours at like eleven o'clock at night mm. uh, and so everybody gets there and I just have a table in the middle of a few other tables but all the other tables are high tables and i'm down low and uh i i start the night off by going how many people in the room tonight believe in psychics and and so many people put up their hand and i said uh i said something like tonight i'm gonna do some stuff that that you'll go home questioning whether i have psychic abilities 
uh, or if, if I'm able to tell the future and stuff like that. And I'm like, but what I'm going to do tonight is absolutely not real. It's 20 years of training. Psychics are not real. <laughs> and like, I don't know, I was talking about them taking apart, taking advantage of people in vulnerable situations and stuff like that. And I had a full script to it. I don't remember, but it was, uh, but it was funny because like, uh, I actually had a guy that I know that's a pastor come out to it and he's like, this is the greatest show I've ever seen. Mm. <laughs> he's like, awesome. he's like, you're demonstrating some crazy stuff. Like it was nuts. Um, and he's like, but, but you're telling people like psychics aren't real and this is fake and everything else. And he's like, this is so good. He's like, I need to bring more people do this again. So. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, imagine if you did a whole, a whole show and you, really were playing into it like you had powers well, i think that's i really think that's what i want to do is yeah and then just and then just like right before the last trick just be like hey by the way guys psychics aren't real and this is all bullshit. you want to see one yeah. more i think i i i actually said after that show because it, it got a really great response and people kept coming to me and saying like you need to keep doing this like every week i was like i should write a show called psychic um and do some just like crazy, crazy psychic ish stuff. And then at the end or closer to the end or whatever, be like, none of this is real. I hope that you know that. So what about, but, what about psychic, but in quotes? Yeah, 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 exactly. Psychic, yeah. So yeah, uh, Fiddlin' Johnny said something, which is like totally true. This happens a lot. I, he said, I remember doing a mentalism set and then say, I don't have any abilities that is just tricks, but I had one guy come up to me afterwards and wink at me and say, I understand that you have to say that, but I know it's real yeah oh i get that all the time uh and that's actually what i i say in a couple a couple of my shows i said <clears throat> i know no matter how much i tell you that this is fake and this is psychology and math and science and, and magic all added together to create what looks like mentalism some of you will go home tonight believing that this is real um no matter what i tell you and just by saying that it's like now that it kind of puts it in their head a little bit as well like oh maybe he has to say that but mm -hmm. um but it's true because no matter how much you tell them that it's not real some people just they want to believe and I, and i think that that's that's okay i think to them like you know everybody has their own belief system and stuff like that and i'm not gonna throw that under the bus or or stuff like that but yeah it uh yeah it I, I, I mean it's like uh I think it's great. It's totally cool when you do something, especially when you say it's not real and people enjoyed it so much and they're so mind blown that then they think he must be lying about the fact that it's not real. That must be the trick. Mm -hmm. when it's like, obviously, there is a method, but the fact that they they believe that there can't be a po there can't possibly be a method. He yeah. must be just lying about the fact that it's a trick. That's really, really powerful. And I think that's a great thing. As long as you're not. Um, oh my god oh. <laughs> what happened? we we asked we said well, we wonder if this person is gonna happen. hop on uh and they did so uh but uh but yeah yeah interesting um <laughs> sleep yeah. With that. yeah but um, it's like i think that's a great thing it's only if you then try to do a um it tried to like feed into it and answer questions or if people try to ask you about stuff about someone who's dead you know mm -hmm. that becomes really really bad territory i um, usually if people ask me like everything i deal with in my show i deal with people's pasts instead of people's futures because um yeah uh, yeah that's a great way to put it is yeah, uh, I can read minds, but I decided to become a stage performer instead of win the lottery. And that's exactly. that's the number one thing I get asked is can I can you tell me the lottery numbers and stuff? And I always just say I I deal with people's past and parts in the show I'm dealing with people's past and not their futures. Um, yeah, and you could also say like I can only read minds and nobody knows what those numbers are. But, yeah, yeah, it's a machine. That's yeah, it's a machine. Nobody knows. <laughs> So. Somebody, yeah it's probably better to just be like yeah it's i deal with the past not the future that's a great way to yeah. put it you know because like then yeah you have actually actual memories and stuff that you can yeah. pull up on and yeah. things because during the show i do that a lot i'm talking about people's memories from the past but yeah and it's interesting how um when you remember in nightmare alley the guy the rich guy starts getting really pissed because 
he yeah. had a bunch of dirt. He was digging on this guy's past and does a ton of research. And now he has all of these facts that he can pull up and figures about this guy's past and things that he shouldn't be able to know. And yeah. then he's like, I know that I'm a bad person. I know I'm messed up. <laughs> I, stop telling me about my past. Tell me about like what's happening, like how I can talk yeah. to the, you know, the after Then what am I thinking now? Oh, got to go see. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's true. But usually I explain to people as well, like, uh, you know, especially after doing a show, like if you've just seen me perform an hour long show, then I'm done. Uh, you know, unless I really want to perform something for them. But yeah, uh, you're like the, you're like the woman that I had on this gig with me. I need long breaks so I can harness long time. breaks. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's true. Cause like, if not, like I'll do some stuff sometimes, but Usually I explain to someone like, oh, if I tell you what you're thinking, then I'm going to have to tell the next 80 people in line to say hello, what they're thinking as well. So it yeah. doesn't work that way. And, and people usually understand that. So, yeah. Um, um, Powerball 60 by Richard Sanders is a great trick that you can read their mind. He gives a justification on why you can't win the lottery, but you can read people. Highly recommend it. Fits in. Well, I'll have to check it out. Nice. Yeah, this is a cool trick. Yeah, it's a cool nice. trick. But, uh, Alrighty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Uh, like I said, we, we wanted to just kind of pay homage to, to, to Max who, you know, developed so much stuff over the years, knew the history of pretty much everything and, uh, and paved the way for a lot of us. So, um, thank you guys. For, yeah. yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope that you guys enjoyed the special as much as we did. Um, cause it, it's crazy. It's way ahead of its time. Uh, and so, um, we'll be back next week with our regular scheduled program. We'll have our guests on, uh, in a couple of weeks, a little bit more upbeat. Less. Actually, it's interesting because you have your lecture on the 16th, right? Yes. I'm a lecture so, that's, on the so that's the Wednesday night as well. Uh, oh, and I'm going to be in New York city. So maybe we'll do a live episode from Tannen's magic. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Or your lecture. We'll be in town as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we can have Laura on as well. So, um, but, uh, <clears throat> Oh, guys, your ad read. <laughs> guys, your ad read. Oh, if you guys are into, oh, actually, this would be, uh, this is something that I, I would be happy to do an ad read about because I have some really good recommendations for audiobooks for this week. Oh, nice. So, um, I don't know if I should maybe recommend just one this week and then I will recommend the next week, the one that I'm almost done with. But I finished an audiobook. So if you guys are interested in audiobooks, go to audibletrial.com slash magic and you can get some free audiobooks to help support the, help support the show. Um, the audiobook that I just finished this past week that I was recommended is uh, Lee Kuan Yew. This is, um, this is uh, Lee Kuan Yew. And this is, um, it's basically, it's almost like a biography, uh, but, it, oh, sorry, whoop almost like a biography, but it is essentially a compilation of a lot of his quotes. So the Grandmaster's mm -hmm. insights on China, the United States, and the world. And basically, Lee Kuan Yew was the former uh, prime minister uh, before he passed away. He was like the fr prime, minister, prime minister of Singapore, and he kind of brought the nation from a third world uh, city-state into like a, a first world country. Cool. And a so, uh, really incredible guy. And he it's like all of these things are from before he died. So they're from before 2015, but they mm -hmm. are his foresight and understanding of history of all different regions of the world, like Russia and China and India and the United States, and then projecting into the future where they were going and knowing the trajectory of them and how he could situate his country of Singapore as this, you know, international, um, you know, powerhouse basically um, with trade and development and everything. It's really amazing. He knew so much uh, and was able to really predict the future. And basically everything that he's predicted in the book is happening and <laughs> it's kind of wild. So I yeah. uh, highly recommend Lee Kuan Yew if you want to like, learn more about what's going on in all different parts of the world. And uh, mm. yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's a good way to wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you next week. And then in two weeks, we'll be in New York City. Yeah. So we'll so. do some, we'll try to do some live for you guys. So, uh, IRL contents. Thanks say what? IRL contents. Oh. <laughs> All right. Peace out, guys. Yeah. guys. We'll do this. <laughs>